The Dyson Gen 5 Detect Cordless Stick Vac is the best and most expensive vacuum cleaner you can buy that gives the best cleaning performance, has the best tools, and tons of smart features. It's extremely quiet, has no ongoing running costs, and has a built-in one-click handheld mode. All the motorised tools detangle hair automatically, and even has a head that shines lasers to reveal dust. Its tiny motor is more powerful than many mains powered machines, and has the strongest suction of any cordless machine by a huge margin. Its cyclonic filtration is better than any other product, and it has an advanced HEPA filter that captures viruses. Despite all the tech packed in, it's only 2.3kg and is ultra simple to use with an LCD screen to help with any problems. It's the most advanced and technologically packed, feature rich, best performing vacuum cleaner you can buy by a huge margin and genuinely blows all other competition away, and your wallet, with a terrifying £850 price tag. If you're afflicted with a short attention span, then thanks for putting up with the difficulty of watching for this long, and you can swipe on until dawn. If you're a bit more erudite, then here's the full review. £850 is the most Dyson have ever charged for a vacuum cleaner, by far. It's not clear why the price is so shockingly high. Inflation has been very bad due to serious economic mismanagement in the last few years, but adjusting for inflation since the V15 was released two years ago would put the equivalent launch price at £735. This is still hugely greater than the £600 actually charged. So what accounts for the extra cost? It's not clear, and while there are no doubt many factors that could be second-guessed, one likely big factor is that Dyson still have literally no true competition whatsoever in the cordless stick vac cleaner space. The reason for this is because making this stick vac form factor work requires very advanced and ultra energy efficient motors to get the power without the weight that only Dyson have researched and patented. Instead, the consumer marketplace is full of knockoff Dyson clones with weak and relatively energy inefficient motors which don't work as well, as my reviews of them clearly show and explain. The complete lack of competition means Dyson, sadly, don't even need to reduce the price of the previous flagship products because no one has yet even begun to approach the technological superiority of even the previous generation that's two years old now. That's genuinely shameful for the tech industry and not exactly good for the consumer's wallet. Nevertheless, you still, just about, do get what you pay for with this new cleaner, and it's very much an ultra-high-end product that's dripping with technological slickness and is becoming a borderline status symbol. Headline changes to this model over the original V15 are the completely revamped next-gen motor technology, the incredible improvements to HEPA filtration, fast particle detection feedback, and a revised laser on the fluffy head, and there are plenty of other refinements and updates too. The improved motor is significant and very impressive, with a 20% greater power density than the V15, allowing 262 motor air watts, which is a measure of the above flow cleaning potential. It starts up and stops instantaneously now, and much faster than even the V15, let alone the lethargic competition. They advertise the machine is 3.5kg, but the main unit and battery are actually only 2.3kg, which is only 200g or so more than the V15. The extra weight doesn't really come from the battery, which contrary to a number of misleading reviews of this machine, actually remains the same 90 watt hours, and is an unnoticeable 10 grams heavier. The extra 200 grams actually comes from the motor. It's got similar run times in each mode, and in boost without motorized tools attached, which offers the new greater motor power, shows the benefits of the increased power density and efficiency. Nothing else on the market even approaches this level of power or technological prowess, not even close. Because the motor is physically larger and heavier, the dimensions of the main unit and battery have changed. The battery dimensions appear to have changed primarily to redistribute weight. It's thinner and longer, protruding further towards the front end to offset the extra motor weight at the back. The extra 200 grams is not really perceptible, but the clearly optimised weight distribution makes it feel less tiring than the V15 in active use, particularly for a buffalo cleaning. The wider motor means the filter is now wider, which gives more netting volume and makes it less likely to clog enough to reduce airflow, which doesn't really happen anyway, unless neglect has occurred, because the newer scrolled cyclones from the V15 are so good. The rest of the body is the same size, including the cyclone pack and bin, although they've changed the catch on the opening mechanism, presumably to make it harder to accidentally open, and the spring hinge is subtly different and they've also increased the size and ease of use of the shroud release button. There's also a subtle optimization to the patterning of the chemically etched metal shroud, which is now inset with a bevel, 
presumably to optimise clearance when the shroud scrapes it during emptying. One of the really notable benefits of the more efficient motor is the surprising reduction in noise. It's easily the quietest sounding vacuum I've ever heard, even more than the NAF Henry canister cleaners of old. And while these are the average noise levels, what's not shown here is how the piercing higher frequency tones are blotted out by their advanced noise suppression technology, so it sounds very muffled and mellow, as though it's under a pillow. The brush by head is now the main source of noise. What this table doesn't show though is a fair comparison between motor powers between products. Many knockoff clones in their boost mode are equivalent to Dyson's lower power modes. The differently shaped battery meant the wall charger needed redesigning. The different wall plate is screwed on first as usual, and the mount slides over the top now. You have to press down hard so it locks in place, and removing it requires a firm pull upwards. Due to the various electrical differences with the battery, which incidentally now runs at 36 volts DC rather than 25, the charger is different. But otherwise fits in similarly and charges the unit automatically when rested in the wall mount, unlike many competitor clone products, which require manual plugging and unplugging. Some of the worst reviews of this machine I've seen have criticised this product just because the charger changed without even appreciating why. They had to for safety, and it's important to understand things before unduly criticising because it doesn't make you look good. I measured performance using the standard method I've used to compare products more representatively, the details of which are shown in the table. The short version is that in all three power modes, performance is actually the same as the V15. The machine uses the exact same cleaner head, and eco and auto modes seemingly use the same power. The suction on this machine is stronger, and overcomes resistive load to drive more air current through the pile, but it's difficult to measure during variable change in motor speed. The extra power the new motor provides in boost is not seemingly utilised in carpet cleaning. In boost mode, you can actually hear the motor reduce power when the brush bar starts up. This is likely because it now generates too much power, and the very large suction pressures of the new motor at full power would cause head clamping, making it impractically difficult to push. I suspect this is a known problem because the public patents refer to an auto bleed valve being developed for future cleaner heads to counter this very issue. So until then, the irony is, their great power advances over the competition aren't actually being used for on-flow cleaning. But having said that, the performance is light years above the competition, and retains the fastest cleaning performance of any cleaner I've ever tested, outperforming the best performing mains cleaner. In other words, this literally is the best performing cleaner you can buy. And seeing as the on-floor cleaning is the same as the V15, this is why the runtimes are also comparable. Only in boost mode without a floor tool attached does the motor blaze in full glory. The performance in low mode on carpet, where you get about 47 minutes, is better than many competitors' boost modes, which typically only give a few minutes runtime. That's how much better this product is. You get almost 10 times the runtime, greater cleaning performance, and a much quieter experience, all because the motor is so much more advanced and energy efficient. The other area they've impressively improved is the filtration which is so far beyond the competition now, it's almost silly. The filters are actually two filters in one, which is testament to great design that makes rinsing them far easier and are designed to last the lifetime of the product without ever degrading or needing replacements. So look out for scammers trying to get you to buy more filters from them. Also make sure they're dry after rinsing before putting them back in the machine to avoid mold and smells. There are many false claims that these filters lose performance over time. They don't and I've measured the volumetric airflow exhausted from a V15 filter when it was new and a year later after it had been rinsed of its dust many times, and confirmed its performance remains completely unchanged, disproving false claims to the contrary. The bin cyclone and shroud are actually the first line of filtration defence, and filter all the easy, big visible stuff out of the air. The microscopic stuff you can't see passes through the finely etched shroud and is handled by the extremely efficient scrawled cyclones. These are the second stage of filtration, and hugely more efficient than anything found in any other product, as I've shown in other reviews. The relatively few ultrafine microscopic particles that escape these are captured by the pre-motor filter, which is the third line of defence. Incidentally, it's important not to go over the max fill line, otherwise more material escapes the bin, or the shroud can clog, preventing enough airflow for the cyclones to work properly, leading to the pre-motor filter getting flooded with dirt, which then needs rinsing to fix. Finally, submicroscopic particles that get past the pre-motor filter are captured by the new advanced HEPA filter, and it's this which has been improved. It's now made not of paper like many competitor machines, 
not even PTFE plastic anymore, but from layers of nanoscopic glass threads. There's actually a scale of filtration quality defined very precisely in the associated industry standard. To be classed as HEPA grade, the filter needs to be able to remove at least 99.95% of particles larger than 300 nanometers. The more particles they remove, the higher the HEPA grade and the cleaner the exhausted air. Dyson have gradually been improving their filters, unlike every other vacuum cleaner manufacturer I'm aware of. The entry level V15 and its PTFE filters could filter out 99.99% of particles larger than 300 nanometers, which was effectively a HEPA grade better than other HEPA residential cleaners on the market, which stick to HEPA 13 grade. In the Gen 5, this filtration level has now been improved to achieve 99.99% of all particles larger than 100 nanometers. While this might not sound like much, this is very significant at nanoscopic scales and is incredibly beyond anything found in any other residential product by a significant margin. Other products are now borderline polluting in comparison. This level of filtration is even capable of filtering out viruses. So for example, in boost mode, it can capture common respiratory viruses like influenza and even SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID. If you want to learn how HEPA filters work at a scientific level, search my channel for how vacuum cleaner filters work. It's important to be aware of serious marketing deception when it comes to filtration. These are some of the misleading tricks companies pull to try and screw you over, so be aware. Firstly, many claim they're HEPA grade, but are actually only EPA grade, so appear to lie right off the bat. Worse, some deliberately avoid using the term HEPA, and fail to fairly compare relative to established HEPA standards, instead misleadingly referring to particles larger than half a micron in the small print which are relatively huge boulders and easy to filter out, making for a deceptive apples and oranges comparison. Worst of all though is the shadiest advertising, claiming the HEPA grade, but not specifying the size range associated with their 99.999% filtration claim, and instead claiming no liability accepted for the accuracy of the information given. This is willful deception because they push big impressive sounding numbers in your face and hide what they really mean or what you'll actually get. Look out for them and avoid like the plague. I'm aware of no residential cleaner with anything even close to the level of filtration that Dyson now offers as standard. One final thing to note is to understand the distinction between a filter's performance and the actual filtered air quality coming out of the machine. Many machines are not sealed, so a lot of the ultrafine dust bypasses the HEPA filters as though they're not even there. New standards now exist to distinguish this, so look out for machines which state they have whole machine HEPA filtration. This means that every single filter and seal throughout the machine has to be HEPA grade as well, and not just the final filter. Many machines won't advertise this claim, so look out for them and avoid if clean air is important to you. Dyson's machines are of course whole machine HEPA filtered, and have been for many years. There have been major improvements to dynamic suction based on the piezoelectric dust sensor. When you first turn the machine on, it tells you the size range of each bar in the histogram. After that, it provides a real-time update of how much dust has been picked up within each size range. And it's accurate too, having been calibrated against a very expensive scientific grade particle size counter. You can see here that rice registers as large particles, salt as medium, and fine flour as microscopic. This isn't just for show, not least because it's hard to read while you're vacuuming because you're focusing on the floor. It's actually used for the hugely improved dynamic suction, and the software controller is so much faster to respond. In the default auto mode, green bars mean low concentration, white is medium, and blue is high and triggers a boost in suction power. The motor is constantly changing speeds by differing degrees depending on the dirt levels detected, and I've never used anything that feels this high tech. When you stop the machine, it shows the cumulative histogram of what was collected in that cleaning session. There have also been changes to the menu options if you hold a power mode button. Essentially, it now only contains language, alerts, toggle, and serial numbers options. The advancements in the sensor software controller have meant the manual sensitivity option isn't needed anymore. This version also comes with the embedded crevice and brush tool, so that with one click, you can convert it into a handheld without having to get any extra tools out like every other product. The only thing that would make this better is having an embedded stiff but flexible extension hose to help reach awkward places, without having to get the extension hose attachment. 
They've also now added a soft foam cushion to the top of the handle, making it feel very padded when holding it, and is much more comfortable. The trigger has also been substituted for an on-off button. Dyson pushed the trigger for many years, arguing that with smart use, it could save up to 30% battery runtime by easily allowing you to turn the machine off when it wasn't being actively used, like when moving furniture. It's likely future battery technology will provide a quantum leap in runtimes, and so this will become less of an issue. A separate button requires two hands to operate every time, and it's harder to turn off quickly if you accidentally suck up a delicate curtain before it's shredded by the brush bar. But it's now harder to accidentally turn the machine on when the bin is open, flooding the filter with dirt, even though this problem can still occur in principle after multiple generations and still hasn't been solved with an interlock. The main floor head is virtually the same as the one on the V15, although the carpet grooming strip of red nylon bristles is now thicker. All its features I've covered in the V15 review, but in short, it has anti hair wrap technology that actually works, carbon fibre bristles for delicate hard floors, side suction channels to bring in particles from outside the head, epicyclic drive eliminating old fashioned drive belts which can snap, and front gates to bleed air in if it clamps and let larger particles in on hard floors. It's the most advanced head available on the market. If the brush bar experiences too much resistance, it'll stall. Loose fitting carpets and rugs are prone to getting sucked into the head gap, and more so on these newer machines with stronger suction. Long pile shaggy carpets are also vulnerable. The stalling torque of the brush bar is set for finger safety and to avoid carpet shredding. Most well fitted carpets shouldn't stall a brush bar, but if it does occur, you can simply open the gates fully to allow bleed air to reduce the pressure difference and stop the carpet being drawn in as deep. On such highly air resistant carpets, cleaning performance shouldn't be impacted much because it's the carpet itself which limits the flow of air through it for a given suction pressure, and thus how effectively it can be cleaned. Look out for misleading nonsense claims that the more recent machines with stronger suction are a step backwards because they can stall when not used in the correct mode. It's completely false and shows no understanding. The other upgrade is to the laser fluffy head for hard floors. They've increased its brightness and changed the lens to give it more range. It now doesn't just show only the part of the floor you're about to go over anyway, and so this is more useful. But, while some people find the laser cosmetically nice, methodical cleaning is still better practice and achieves the same result. Only cleaning where you can visibly see dust is sloppy, and harmful microscopic dust is invisible to the naked eye anyway. It's not clear why the laser hasn't been integrated onto the main head, which is also designed for hard floor use, does the same job just as effectively, even on delicate flooring, and avoids the hassle of head switching and storing. The laser on off button has been removed as well, but otherwise, the fluffy head is identical to the one on the V15. It comes with the best tools available, all of which are available for the V15. The hair screw tool is the ultimate anti hair wrap mini motorized head, which is perfect for stairs and furniture, and I've covered it in more detail in the V15 review. The Gen 5 already has the crevice tool built in, and in this model, they've bundled the old combi tool along with the low reach adapter. This particular model doesn't come with any of the new tools, like the amazing self-cleaning dusting tool, or extension hose, but they can be bought separately, and I suspect other revised Gen 5 versions will come out over time with these bundled, as is the case in other countries, like Australia. Not sure why they didn't bundle them with this to be honest, given the price, and I think they should have done. Too many models cause confusion for people. Just provide everything in one package at launch. This model didn't come with a one clip, but I bought one separately to keep other useful tools on board that I use a lot. Because of the change in output power from the new battery, all the power tools from older products won't work on this machine, and so they've changed the connection key so they don't fit to prevent accident. This includes all the old motorised tools and the light pipe crevice tool. Interestingly, all the motorised tools at least are now made in Malaysia rather than the Philippines where the V15 was made. Many of the more racist comments I've received have criticised Dyson and falsely suggested it has poor build quality, or is simply bad, for reasons none other than it being manufactured in a country that isn't their own. These attachments are physically and functionally identical, showing that the advanced robots that print them from raw ingredients do so identically, regardless of where they physically sit on Earth. Likewise, the Gen 5 is still made of the same advanced and highly durable polymers, contrary to false claims made without evidence in some reviews, and is tested to death and tough as nails. So what about the future? It's clear that the aging old lithium ion battery technology is holding these machines back. Dyson have astoundingly advanced motors, 
but can't be cordlessly powered for long enough in max mode that would really allow them to shine as they could. Fortunately, Dyson has been developing very advanced next-gen batteries and is building a huge and very expensive gigafactory in Singapore to manufacture a new proprietary battery technology that will increase power density immensely by at least twice and possibly far greater. It's due to become fully operational in 2025 and so may appear in the next generation or two of cleaners. They've spent a decade and billions of pounds researching these batteries. There's a battery revolution coming in the latter half of this decade that will radically change cordless products. A likely goal will be to achieve the equivalent of boost mode all the time, similar to mains machines. This would maximise volumetric airflow entering the cyclones and increase their efficiency, as well as maximising HEPA filtration efficiency, and it would also give the highest cleaning performance without runtime issues. The motor needed to do this in a lightweight handheld form factor exists now in the Gen 5, but just can't be powered for long enough yet without an impractically heavy and large lithium ion battery. A solid state battery of similar weight might give 30 minutes in boost mode. This will likely be combined with cleaner head advancements to avoid clamping and to improve performance. It's already known from public patents that they're working on several new designs, one of which is equivalent to two hair screw tools placed together to provide better anti hair wrap than combs and hopefully this will have the laser on as well. Very few manufacturers haven't now copied Dyson's pioneering cordless stickback form factor that they started with the DC35 in 2010 and really took off with the V10 in March 2018. This form factor was despised by naysayers who said it was doomed to failure. That virtually every other manufacturer now has their own stickback clone, that Dyson continues to advance light years ahead of them all, and that the V15 and Gen 5 stick vacs have the best cleaning performance test data out of any vacuum I've tested shows how completely wrong they were, as many of us predicted. Hopefully this review has captured many of the important details of this machine that often go missed, and that the technology has been appreciated appropriately, given that this is a technology channel really. I hope you enjoyed the review.